Town and Country, The Photographic Legacy of Dr. F. E. Waite. Dr. Frederick Elmer Waite was born October 4, 1897, in Arden, Manitoba. Following his schooling in Calgary, he graduated in medicine from McGill University in 1923. His medical career, including nine years as assistant general practitioner and surgeon to Dr. Arthur Lynch, a prominent pioneer Saskatoon surgeon, followed by a number of years in private practice. During this time, he held appointments at both St. Paul's and City Hospitals. At St. Paul's, he was Chief of Surgery. He retired in 1964 and died on June 28, 1991, at the age of 93. A member of the Saskatoon Camera Club, Dr. Waite had a special flair for photography. His eye for spectacular visual effects and his innate creativity enabled him to capture myriad images of great artistry. Many of them depict stunning dramatic scenes of Saskatoon and the prairies. Dr. Waite also roamed far beyond this region to capture a spectrum of subjects that included portraits, architecture, still life, animals and plant life, medical sciences, landscapes, cityscapes, and seascapes. Many have been exhibited or published. Almost his entire collection of prints, negatives, and slides was bequeathed to the local history room and acquired following his death in 1991. Recognizing the historic importance and aesthetic value of his work, the Saskatoon Public Library presents this tribute to Dr. Waite, featuring Saskatoon cityscapes, landmark heritage structures and long vanished vistas, as well as several striking country views. A mid-1950s view of King Edward School on 25th Street East. Designed by the school board architect David Webster, the school was built in 1911 and demolished in June 1979, a few months after a fire gutted much of its west side. The YWCA and King Edward Place currently occupy the site. A breathtaking winter view of St. Paul's Cathedral on Spadina Crescent, nestled amidst the lacy branches of trees sheathed in hoarfrost. St. Paul's was built in 1910 by Shannon Brothers and Cassidy. The architect was J. E. Fortin of Montreal. The observatory at the University of Saskatchewan, framed by two leafless trees and with a dramatically lit sky as backdrop. The university's board of directors approved the construction of the observatory in 1929, and it was completed in 1930. A chilly winter view of Riversdale around 1945. St. Mary's Church, to the right, is at 20th Street and Avenue O. The dome of St. George's Ukrainian Greek Catholic Cathedral looms in the distance. Along with Nutana, Riversdale became part of Saskatoon in 1906. A de Havilland moth biplane perched in front of the Saskatoon Aero Club hangar. The club was formed in 1927 and built this hangar the following year. An August 10, 1928 Daily Star article described it as a new filling station at the Air Harbour with a big pole that will be visible for miles. It has a windsock on it, painted with black and white stripes, the registered colours of the Saskatoon Aero Club, so that the transient pilot will know where he is. Children drive a Bennett buggy along the shores of Emma Lake in the late 1930s. During the Depression, many car owners could not afford fuel for their vehicles. Horse-drawn cars were dubbed Bennett buggies after Conservative Prime Minister R.B. Bennett, whose ineffectiveness in the early 1930s made him the butt of countless jokes.
Smoke from the AL Coal Power Plant billows over the CN Rail Yards and First Avenue and swirls around the overhead pedestrian walkway that linked First Avenue and 20th Street. According to longtime Saskatonians, the walk over the rail yards was the coldest midwinter walk on earth. Taken from the west bank looking northeast, Dr. Wake captured artistically the reflection of the Broadway Bridge in the icy waters of the South Saskatchewan River. The Broadway Bridge was a relief project of the Depression era. On November 11, 1932, this concrete art bridge was officially open, connecting the main downtown business district with Nutana. The Thorvaldsen Building illuminated against the night sky on the university campus before modern buildings rose up around it. The building opened in 1924. Originally called the Chemistry Building, it was renamed in 1963 in honor of Dr. Thorberger Thorvaldsen, a distinguished chemist and professor who came to Saskatoon around 1919. He was internationally esteemed for his research on the chemistry resistant to alkali corrosion. A skier in mid-flight, sailing off the ski jump that stood from 1930 to 1978 on the riverbank near the Canadian Pacific Railway Bridge. An earlier jump at Devil's Dip on the university grounds was deemed unsafe after its first season. Another soaring skier, this time captured in silhouette against a twilight sky. Two other skiers trudge up the jump to await their turn. The artistry of Saskatchewan's Indigenous people displayed on handsome teepees, probably at Pioneer around 1957. Pioneer was a summer fair originally held in the 1950s and 1960s on the old Western Development Museum grounds at 11th Street and Avenue P. The fair merged in 1971 with the Exhibition Board and the WDM to become Saskatchewan, later the Saskatoon Industrial Exhibition. Saskatoon's best-known landmark, the much-photographed Besborough Hotel, as seen from Saskatchewan Crescent. The Castle of the River was built at the start of the Depression and was completed in 1932. There was mo no money to run it, however, so it stood empty until December 1935. A rainbow seems to spring from the President's residence on campus, echoing the arches of the University Bridge, in turn reflected in the river. R.J. Lucky and Company began construction of the bridge in 1913. It opened in 1916, the second traffic bridge in Saskatoon. A reverend crowd assembles for a wreath-laying ceremony at the Cenotaph on 21st Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenues. This scene may have been the Remembrance Day services held November 11, 1945, at the close of World War II. The observance in honour of the war dead was known as Armistice Day until 1931. The Cenotaph was unveiled on Armistice Day in 1929 and remained on 21st Street until August 1957 when it was moved to City Hall and rededicated. Farmstead on the horizon of a flat prairie landscape. A brooding sky looms overhead, warning of the ferocious storm to come. Will the windmill survive the onslaught? Dr. Waite excelled in smoke and vapor pictures. Here fumes and sparks highlight this stunning shot of a welder at work.
These handsome, old-fashioned street lamps with multiple globes illuminated many streetscapes early in this century. Although this photo is taken in Regina, the lamps also proliferated in Saskatoon. By 1920, Saskatoon boasted more than 800 electric light standards with varying numbers of lights in each, and of these, 529 are on ornamental standards on the main business streets, declared a 1920 promotional pamphlet. Hoarfrost on the riverbank bushes forms a lacy filigree against mist that obscures the opposite bank, a typical winter vista in and around Saskatoon. The Pinnacles of the Besbro, Saskatoon's most famous landmark, captured at an oblique angle against a darkening sky as vapour pours forth through the chimney. Smoke billows from one of the powerhouses, possibly the A.L. Coal plant, which opened in 1929. The Saskatoon of 1903 had primitive streets, no sidewalks, no drainage, and none of the modern conveniences such as sewers, water, and electricity. The first powerhouse was built in 1906. Increased demand for electricity has resulted in a succession of facilities to serve the city's needs. Horses in silhouette against a backdrop of dramatic cloud formations highlight this prairie vista. Icicles on the riverbank hang over the dark waters of the South Saskatchewan River. This quintessential winter scene reflects Dr. Waite's eye for contrast and artistic composition in detail. We hope you enjoyed our virtual recreation of Town and Country, the photographic legacy of Dr. F. E. Waite. The original show was held from February 14th to March 25th, 1994, curated by Ruth Miller. We invite you to visit Local History the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Central Library.